In today's video, we're gonna show you how to take your G20 paddle shifters from this to these amazing G20 carbon fiber paddle shifter extensions. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more BMW content and visit us at keysmotorsports.com. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install carbon fiber paddle shifter extensions on a G20 BMW. Now when designing the G20 paddle shifters, I think BMW did a really nice job. I think they made them significantly better than the F30 style, which kind of looked like a steering wheel with uh, some weird ears on it. But one area that I think BMW fell short is, well, they're just a little bit short. So I feel like, you know, with the paddle, I like to get my whole hand on there. Um, all four fingers, but I feel like oftentimes my pinky kind of misses it. Now, maybe I'm biased because I have paddle shifter extensions in all of my cars, but once you get used to the feeling of a paddle shifter extension, it just feels so much more substantial than what you get from the factory, and it looks amazing. Now, before we jump into the step-by-step -step DIY, I do want to mention that paddle shifter extensions are more for that initial look and feel you're not supposed to really use the top. And it's not a limit of our paddle shifter, it's actually a limit of BMW's paddle shifting electronics because it's all plastic with a flimsy little plastic pin. So what happens is if you try to, I mean, I don't really know why you're flipping it with your pinky up there. <laughs> It's a little crab. <laughs> but anyway, what you're doing is you're just putting extra stress on, again, we're gonna show them to you in a minute, BMW's plastic components, which can't take that kind of leverage or you're gonna snap it. But like I said, don't be flipping it with your pinky because it's not gonna work out good. <laughs> Last thing I wanna say before we start the DIY is we have these in a variety of different carbon fibers and also aluminum. So maybe you're not a carbon guy. We have aluminum in different colors as well. With that, let's disconnect the battery and get started. Now with this installation, we are working around an airbag. You wanna make sure that you disconnect your battery before removing the airbag. If you do not, A, it could blow up in your face, which is probably a bad idea. And B, if you are successful and your face doesn't get hit with an airbag, it's going to throw an airbag alert in the car. And a lot of times you have to go to a dealer to actually clear that. So just do it the right way and disconnect the battery. If you haven't removed the battery or disconnected the negative terminal, it's in your trunk. Now, when you open up your trunk, you may be thinking, where the heck is it? Well, BMW decided to get a little sneaky here and they put it under here. So you are going to need some kind of trim tool to get to it. That's the one that I used here. And then you're going to go over to your negative terminal. You're gonna loosen this up. And just take it off like that and put it to the side. Now, once you've done that, I would highly recommend taking a microfiber towel and putting it on your trunk. You might actually even wanna just pull that out like that. And the reason for that is because if you shut your trunk, with your battery disconnected, it's going to be very difficult to unlock. You have to try to reach through the seat or disassemble your seat to try to get to the emergency handle. And it's a huge pain in the butt. So just make sure that you do this. So if your friends are helping you, they shut the trunk, you're not locked out. Now, before we get started, I just want to give you a rough overview of what's going to happen. So first thing we're going to do, we need to remove the airbag. So I'll show you how to do that. There's an airbag connection, and then there's one or two others. It all depends on the car spec. And then there is a bolt that holds the wheel on, and then the wheel comes right off. So it's a pretty simple process. Now, something that I do wanna let you know is that unlike on the F series, BMW was kind of a pain in the butt with the G series. If you look right here, I'll try to not blow out the shot. There is a little indentation in your wheel. And what you need to do is you actually need to open that up, which is why I have a flat tipped screwdriver. Um, just be as gentle as you can. Whenever you do paddle shifters, you're going to have ever so slight holes in the back of your wheel. 
unless you tell your friends or make online videos, no one's ever gonna know. But that is something that I do wanna let you know if that's not something you're interested in. Maybe just watch the video and see if that's something you wanna do. And if you don't wanna do it, you don't have to do it. All right, so what, what you wanna do, just take a small flathead and then just puncture that little hole. Next, you're going to need some kind of tool to insert in there. I like to use this, it's a T10 um, Torx driver, so you can see it has a little Torx bit. But why I like it is because it has a flat top right here. Now, some people, and we, we did this on the Super video, sometimes people like to use a flathead. You put it in and then turn it sideways, but I just think that it's a lot easier to do when you have something like this. So if you've watched our F30 or F80 videos on how to do the M4, basically what you're going to do, you're going to press this in that hole as straight as you can. There's a little channel that I'll show you once the airbag is off. So you're gonna just gently press it in straight. You're going to hear a little clip and then you're going to pull that side of the airbag out. Then you're going to go along to the other side, insert it, and then it's going to fully release it. So let me do the other side and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so you just feel through. There we go. That side is released. And it's going to stay popped out. You don't really have to worry too much about it actually clipping back in. Okay, so in case you don't have one of these fancy T10 drivers, I'm gonna show you how to do it with just a normal Allen key. So the biggest thing is finding the correct angle um, because that's something that a lot of people online won't tell you. The angle is actually like this. Um, so when you're looking at the wheel, it's not quite 45 degrees, it's a, it's a little bit higher. Um, but just, just feel around to where it gently slides in and I'm gonna show you once we take this off. So once you have it back, you just push and then that is going to unclip the airbag. So now that the airbag is released, you just kind of work your way around. There is a plug up here. And if you look over here, you can see that there is a little button. Basically what you do is you press down on that button and then this is going to slide out and then you can put your airbag in a safe place. Now, before we go any further, we did promise that we're going to give you a better look at how this works. So if you look right there, that is the little channel. I'm not sure if you can see right there or not. You can see my driver. And what you're doing is you are pushing on this. So when you push your driver in, you're gonna snap it over like that and then it's going to release the wheel. So as you can see, it takes a little bit of force to get it to come out. Um, much better than the base model F30s. A million times better. You still have to break the leather, but other than that, everything looks really good. And if you wanna take a look at what that's going to look like, this is what kind of size hole you can you can expect to have. Now we could take a pick tool and try to pull that out a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. We'll do that on the table, but we do want to set that expectation as well. Now I'm not sure if I'll be able to hold the light and do this, but we need to disconnect this connection up here. Okay. It just pulls out. There's no other tabs or anything. And then this one here it might be a little bit tricky with my light, but there we go. just like that. So once you've done all that, everything electronically is disconnected. We just need to remove that center bolt. Next, you're going to need a 16 millimeter to remove the center bolt. Now, if you are doing this by hand without some kind of power tool, um, you're gonna wanna have a second person holding the steering wheel with you because this bolt is in here ridiculously tight. So what we're gonna do, we have our impact here. You can see it was even tough for the impact at first. All right, and we got that out. BMW is using some kind of Loctite on there now that they didn't used to do, but that's what it looks like and it is out. And if we take a look here, this is something that's going to be very important and something that you don't wanna miss. So first off, when we remove the wheel, do not touch this black plastic in here. If you mess that up, you're gonna have a really bad day. Second, 
once I move some of this Loctite out of here, you will notice that on the steering wheel, there's this little groove right here. You're also going to notice, move some of that junk out of the way, that there is a little notch right here. The way that BMW engineered this is that it's a spline system. However, at the, at the bottom, there's no splines, it's perfectly flat. So it makes removing the wheel and installing it super easy. But if you have it the wrong way, it's not gonna go on. So again, make sure that you line those two up and it's literally going to fall off with no effort at all. So with that, let's take this over to the bench and swap out these paddles. So now that we have the wheel off of the car, what we need to do is get a T20 and we need to release the paddles. Now they're just held in by one T20 and this little blue clip here on each side. So if you can look in here, there's a screw right there. So I'm just gonna take this. Now, one thing to note, if you don't feel like taking the steering wheel completely off, you don't need to, you can do this with everything still installed. It just makes it a little bit trickier. And for us, it makes it really hard to see on camera. Okay. Now, if I wasn't teaching you how to do this, I would typically just pull it out a little bit and then do the swap and then push it back. But for video purposes, it's going to be a lot easier if I disconnect this blue connection like that and then pull it out. So I'll show you how to do it this way on this side and then I'll show you how to do it with it on on the other. All right, so here you can see the mechanism that actually controls your shifting. And as we mentioned before, it's just flimsy plastic. That's why when you put an extension on, you can't really tweak it too much because there's really not much holding it together. So the way that this is held together is literally just with this little pin. So when you look at this pin, you'll notice that it is a certain size on the other, and then you'll notice that it's either bigger or smaller on the other side. In this case, it is smaller here, so you wanna take from the smaller end and push it out. So on the upshift, you're gonna pull it out from the bottom. Next, what you're going to do is look for these two holes right here. You're going to flip it over, and then you're going to rock it up, just be very careful, and out this way. When you look at the two holes, it's actually two clips, and it's always good to reference your new paddle shifters if you're having any difficulty with this. Um, but basically, if you look right here and right here, these actually slide into here and here. So when you're doing this, I'll try to show you from the side, you put it down a little bit and then you pull it back. So you put it in when it's back and then you lock it in place like that. Now the reason that I always face it like this when I'm removing this is because you'll notice that there's a little spring and then there's also this little piece of plastic. If you do it upside down, it's probably gonna shoot out. So with our paddle shifters, we have it so it is direct plug and play. So all you really need to do is you're going to just insert it, move it back like that, and then you're going to take the small end feed it up the bottom and just make this nice and flush okay, just like that do some test clicks and that's it that is how easy it is and you can see here the drastic difference of the OEM shifter and also our keys carbon paddle okay so once you've done that it's pretty easy the little cable is going to go through that square hole like so and you're gonna fish it up, okay? Put it in place. And then you're gonna reinstall your screw, okay? And then just be careful as you tighten it because it is plastic and you don't want it to crack. And once you've done that, simply reconnect this. And then you can use the other side as an example, but it's secured in with a little bracket, okay? So it's gonna look like this when you're done. And as you can see already, the carbon just looks amazing. The cool thing, like I said before, your pinky kind of hangs off otherwise, but you just have such nice grip. And as we said, don't be snatching at it with your pinky, with ours or any brand, because the plastic electronics can't take it. Um, but this completely transforms the wheel. It feels amazing, and it's gonna give you more confidence. As a man. <laughs> okay, same thing on the other side. Just move this clip out of the way. 
move that, and then you'll see the T20. You understand the general principle now. All right, so when we look, I'll bet you that side's the bigger side. Yep. So we're gonna push this down, just like that. So this one goes top down. It's gonna go like that. Rock it up, out of the way. Rock it down, lock it in place. Top down. Okay. I like to make sure it's nice and flush. Make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Put that back. Hey, and look at that, our screw didn't fall out. Then the last step is to take your little blue connector. And push this into the clip. All right, perfect. All right, so there you can see our paddles and you can see how easy it is to do. And they just look phenomenal. Now, before you get into the car, you might wanna do just a couple test clicks. Make sure that everything is nice and tight. Um, these are super tight. You're not gonna have much wiggle on them at all. Um, but yeah, they just look and feel amazing. So let's install them back in the car. All right, so now we have our wheel fully installed. I do, before we reinstall this, I wanna show you that I was able to pull this out with a pick tool a little bit. I'll show you what both sides look like. So you can definitely tell that, you know, we've installed something, or the wheel's been removed on the car. However, when it's in this orientation, you're never gonna see it. Uh, but at least now it doesn't look like there's an actual hole. So like we said before, take your wheel, line it up just like that. If it doesn't slide on with absolute ease, you have it wrong. So make sure that you do it correctly. We're going to reinstall our center bolt here. And then we're gonna torque it down to 62 Newton meters. Ugh. Good, I'm gonna clip that in, get it nice and straight, pop it in, do a couple tests, make sure that both sides are completely engaged. And at this time, we can plug in the battery and then check it out. Okay, so now that everything is finally installed, everything is final torqued, you wanna just look right here. We need to do a test. So start the car, put it in drive, and then you can just shift up and shift down. And then as long as that's going up when you upshift and then down when you downshift, you're good. Now, standing still, it's only gonna let you really stay in M1 or M2. It's not gonna let you stay in third or fourth gear. So if you go up to seventh or whatever, it's gonna knock you down in a second. And then, yeah, that's how you test it. So as you just saw, it is a pretty easy process if you wanna upgrade your paddle shifters in your G20. And if you're looking for the parts or any tools we use in today's video, be sure to see the links down below. Once again, my name is Brian. That's Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.